Hi, I'm Laura, the Library Lady, and welcome to my channel. One of the things that makes children very successful in school is having basic knowledge about reading. Reading is a key compo component to student success. And how do we teach children reading? Well, it's best to start at the very beginning. Your children learn so much language just by observing you and mocking you. So whatever you say, they will say. So make sure you spend time with your child reciting the ABCs because sound and symbols are really where language begins. And especially reading because reading is just the symbols that we use to represent sound. So teaching your children the ABCs is a great way to help them on the road to reading success. You can sing that traditional song, A, B, C, D. Children love singing, and they love singing with their parents. You can also use all types of aids. Today, I'm going to focus on one specific alphabet book. This book is entitled, I Spy, Little Letters. I Spy has been around for a long time, and this book was written by Jean Morezzo, and the photographs are by artist Walter Wick. In this book, the students, your child will see all the letters. Let's open it up and take a look. It starts off with the very first letter of the alphabet. I will read this first page. I spy letters on a big red A. And we see the A here. An airplane and an ant that's crawling away. So airplane and ant are something that you can easily identify with your child. And then the next page, and on this page, there are other things that start with the letter A. You have the letter A. You have apple, arrow, airplane, ant, astronaut, and acorn. So when you read a book with your child, make sure you go over the illustration. Now, this is a board book. It is great for little hands. You can start reading with your child as young as two or three years old with this book. It's nice because it's nice and thick. If the child wants to bend it, he can. If he draws on it with a crayon, it won't cause much trouble. And we know young children love to put things, what, in their mouths. That's totally normal. They're very oral when they're very young. So this book could withstand it. And if you go through this book, with your child every night or at least once a day or three times a week, your child will not only learn the ABCs, but they will learn to recognize the letters and they will also recognize the items that start with those letters. If you want to take it a step further, you can also identify the colors of each letter. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about the author. Jean Morazzo is a poet, and she started writing poetry when she was a very young girl. If you want to find more about this particular author, guess what? She has her own website. So you as a parent can go online and see what she's doing. She has done several I Spy books. I Spy is all about finding things. Secondly, Mr. Walk. Mr. Wick also has a website, and he has all kinds of things on his website as well. He's a very talented author, illustrator, and photographer. So these are two individuals that you can find out more information from and possibly correspond with as well to get more ideas. The great thing about iSpy is that the author and illustrator has made a contract with Scholastic. That's right. Scholastic is a publisher, but Scholastic also has TV shows and a website. If you go online under iSpy, you will find the 
Scholastic Link, and there are all kinds of online games that you can play with your children, and they're absolutely free. All of these activities reinforce their ABCs. You can also get this book at your local bookstore, Amazon.com, and of course at Scholastic. My vote, being a librarian, I say always go to the library. Now remember, this is the board book format. It also comes in paperback, hardback, and probably on some ebook format as well. It's also very important that you talk to your children about who is an author, what is an illustrator, and what they do. This is the cover of the book. This is the spine of the book. This is the back of the book. And these are the pages of the book. You can talk about all of these things when you read the book with your child. You don't have to do it all in one setting. Now, once you do that, you can play all kind of games with this book as well. I just so happen to have the puzzle that goes with the book. You see, Mr. Walter Wick, the illustrator and photographer, loves games and loves science. So this is a 63-piece puzzle, and all of the alphabet is listed here. So after you read the book with your child, you can also help them put together puzzles of the piece, puzzle, pieces of the puzzle. This is good, and it helps the child learn how to put things together, look for colors that are the same, sorting things, sequencing. These are all key ingredients to being successful academically especially if you do it with your child, and especially if your child is very young. If you have more than one child, you can ask an older child to work with your younger child, and puzzles are a great way to spend a summer day. Now, you say to me, I don't have this puzzle, I don't have this book, I don't need, live near a library or a bookstore. Well, if you can make up your own games using the alphabet, that's all right too. You can do it old school, like my mother did. When I was young, after my mother used all the eggs in an egg carton, she cut off the top and she poured salt in each of the little egg cartons and she helped me draw each letter of the alphabet. So after I get the first 12, she would shake it up and she would, we would draw the next 12 and of course there's 26 letters in the alphabet. Also, when I was young, I had a sandbox in the backyard. I don't know if children still play with sandboxes or not, but that's a great way to learn the alphabet too. And if you're a beach bum during the summer, take some time to help your child learn how to draw their letters in the sand. That's a great activity. If you can uh, have paper and pencil, that works too. You can even make your own alphabet book. That's right. After you see this one, you can take some note cards and write A and go and write one line about A, one line about B, and put it together and have your own book. Once you do that, you can take all the note cards, put them out of order, and have your child put them in the correct order again. That's reinforcing the skills, and it's hands-on. Some children learn by vision, some learn by hearing, some by speaking, and some by touching. You may not know your child's best mode of learning but you just experiment, especially when they're very young. So you don't teach the same way every time you sit down and work with your child. One time it may be the book, another time it might be some toys. I used to have alphabet blocks. That was a lot of fun too. You can even make your own puzzle. It doesn't have to be something that's store-bought because puzzles, they can get expensive. So you can take a piece of paper, draw the ABCs or whatever you like, you can laminate it or not, cut it out, and have your child put it together, and have your child make their own drawing and cut it out. Now, be very careful with young children and scissors. Make sure they are supervised at all times and that they don't have any uh, scissors that have a point. All young children should only use scissors under supervision and with round tips so they don't cut or stab themselves or a neighbor or a friend or a brother or sister by accident and no impromptu haircuts okay <laughs> so hopefully you will take this time to work with your child and remember 
You working with your child is so important. No matter what a teacher does, what you do will only enhance it and give your child an edge. And your child should have basic language skills when they enter kindergarten, if at all possible. Some of you may be in, putting your child in pre-K or pre-3, and that's fine too. And they will have their teachers and the aides work with them, and people like me, the librarian. But none of us can take the place of a wonderful, loving parent. And you can start working with your child as soon as you're ready. Some mothers start reading to their children in the womb. It's a very special time for you and your child. So it's up to you. You want to make sure you give your child every advantage that you have. And if you say to me, well, Laura, the library lady, I don't have all those things. You know what? You don't have to have anything but a loving heart. If you can't do anything but say A, B, C, D and make it into a song, a rap, or a beat, or whatever you like, that'll work. Go around your house. Point out everything that starts with a B. Today is B day. What do we see? In, what do we have in our house? Oh, that's a Bible. That's a book. Oh my goodness, that's a boot. You'll be shocked at how many things in your home or wherever it is that you live start with the letter B. So have a B day, an A day, a C day, a K day. You can make all kinds of games. You don't have to have a book. You don't have to have a library. You don't have to have a computer or a laptop. All you have to have is a loving heart, the time, the wheel, a big fat smile, and lots of kisses for your children and support. So I hope this helps. Thank you so much. And remember, it's easy as one, two, three, and A, B, C.